Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to do some basic correlation analysis in Excel. I'll show you two examples, one using the correlation function and one using the correlation feature in the data analysis tool pack. So let's start with correlation function. Now basically with correlation what you're trying to do is trying to establish a relationship between two or more variables. And sometimes you have a situation where you have the in independent variable and a dependent variable. Let's say our independent variable is x and our independent our dependent variable is y. So x could be something like a temperature or time. So as the temperature increases, maybe there's more ice cream sales. So in this particular example, I'm just going to put some dummy data here, some any kind of data. And I just use the random sample function, rand between function, just to create some random numbers. So let's say 24 to, I don't know, 123. And let's press control enter and that will enter this function into all the cells that I've selected here. Control enter. You can see it's entered it there. If I press the F9 times or the delete key, it's going to change that function because this is a volatile function. And when you execute via the F9 key or the delete key, it oops, control Z to undo that. I click outside and press the delete key. You press one of those keys and it's going to recalculate that function. Now it's really fairly easy to use the correlation function. All you need to do is type equal CORR and this corel function. It takes two arguments, a tab it to autocomplete array, array one and array two. Array one is the X here, comma, and then array two is my Y values there. Press enter and you have a negative correlation, minus 0.22. All that means is when x goes up, the y is going to go down, or it's going to go in the opposite direction. It's inverse. And a better way to do this is to see it in a graph. So let's see how it looks in a graph. I'm going to highlight that so you can see that. And the way that we can do this is use a scatter graph or a scatter chart. So go under. I'm going to click outside the range value here so it's because it's easier to create the scatter graph from, from scratch. So go to insert and under my charts group here for the two line, I'm oops, not the two line one, we're going to look for the scatter. So under scatter, we're just going to select the scatter here and it gives me a blank chart. I need to just go under select data because we have my chart tools contextual menu, go to select chart or select data and my legend entries I don't really need a series name my series X values is going to be a2 to a12 my series Y value let's delete this is going to be b2 to b12 and you'll see that I have my data here right so I have my X here and my Y here so really this this chart doesn't really tell me much of how it relates to this value here we, we see there's a negative relationship, um, but it doesn't really tell me much. And one way to really give you some idea of that relationship is to have a trend line. So I can just click on the chart elements here, click on trend line, and we're going to, by default, it's going to go to linear. So if you go to more options, you'll see by default it goes linear. And that's fine because we just want to see the direction. And you can see that it slopes downward. and Basically, when it slopes downward, it's telling you it's a negative relationship. As the values of x go up, the values of y go down. Now, if I recalculate this, I just press the F9 key a couple times, you can see it's going to recalculate a little bit. And let's see if I can get a positive relationship, a pretty good positive relationship. Click it a couple more times, and let's see what we got. Oh, that looks pretty good. So we have a slope that goes up, and our correlation is positive. It's not negative, right? So you can see that our trend line is sloping upwards. As the x value goes up, the y value also goes up. So the correlation function just gives you a basic idea of how these values correlate. Now, if you want to show some significance of those values, are these values significant? That's not part of the correlation function. Function You probably need to do a little bit more, use a little bit more of the analysis tools, maybe a linear regression, and look at the p-values. But that's beyond the scope of this video. All we're trying to figure out is, is there a correlation between these two values? Now, 
In addition to using the corel function, if we have more than two variables, we can use the function that is available within Excel. I've already populated these cells here. Let's say, for example, this was satisfaction scores from a survey. We have our overall satisfaction score, and this is from one to five, one being bad, five being excellent. We have our hardware satisfaction score, software support, and website satisfaction score. So basically, this is a survey. And maybe you want to see which ones correlate to each other. We have more than two variables here. So we can actually use the data analysis feature, the correlation feature in Excel. We go into data, and under the analysis group, there is this data analysis uh, feature, or this command. And in there, there is this correlation capability. If you don't have this available in your version of Excel, just Google how to install data analysis tool pack in Excel, and you'll probably find something from Microsoft on how to install it and enable it. But this is already available for us. I just click OK, and I'll select my input ranges, which is cell A1 to E12, uh, grouped by columns. They are grouped by columns. My variables are grouped by columns. And my labels are in the first row, A uh, row 1. And I just put this all in this sheet here. And I'll select cell H1 here. Click OK. And now we have our correlation values here. Now there's different opinions on uh, where a value sits in the range from 0 to 1 or 0 to negative 1 if it is um, high in correlation. Uh, I think for the most part when I looked online for the most part uh, anything of 0.5 and above for positive or 0.5 and below or 0.5 and above negative shows you the correlation whether it's positively, positively correlated if it's a positive correlation or it's negatively correlated, if there's a negative correlation. So what we can do here, if we want to use that as a threshold, is I can take this and apply some conditional formatting. I can go to Home, Conditional Formatting, Highlight Bar Rules Between. So I can say if this is 0.5 and 0.99, a 1 would indicate basically a, a vertical line. And in probably most situations you probably won't see that but I'm just gonna put between 0.5 and 0.99 we're gonna highlight that and you can see nothing shows up because there's nothing that is 0.5 or greater in this example we'll also want to put conditional formatting for the values that are between negative 0.5 and negative 0.99 right click OK and you see there's no values in there right and what, I'm, what I can do here is if we wanted to kind of set this up as a template and I'm going to change this around, I can actually put my other, uh, create another table that is referencing off down here and then just copy and paste it up here and see if the values change. So let's try that. So I am in my table here, go to data, data analysis, OK, and I've already selected that range here from A1 to E12. But my output range, let's just put it down here in E12, I mean H12. Click OK. And now we have different values here. And in this table, I'm just going to select everything. And since I selected that first cell in I2, I2 I'm going to reference uh, I13. So here, I just t type equal this cell and then press Control Enter because that will execute that function or that command for all the cells I selected here. So this cell is going to reference I13. The cell below it, which says hardware overall, is going to reference cell I14. Press Control Enter to execute this. And now you see that it's done that. So you see the cell references I14, which is that number. So all I can do right now, if you wanted to kind of set this up as a template, you can see nothing's been selected here because our thresholds haven't been met, 0.5 positive or negative. So what? What I can do, let's try to do the analysis here. Again, let's change the numbers. Press F9 a couple times. Let's change the numbers, go to data analysis, click OK. I'm going to keep everything because it hasn't changed, right? Because I'm just going to have it reference and overwrite the values here, the output options. It's on H12. So I'll just have it overwrite the options there. Click OK. Click OK. It says it's going to overwrite it. Yes, that's fine. And now you see we have our overall hardware that references this value here and this is our template so 
whatever we change here is going to be referenced here. And we see that there is a negative correlation between the satisfaction, overall satisfaction scores and the hardware scores. So you can take a look at that and do some further analysis and see why that is if this was an example that you wanted to put. So maybe in this example, we have a weekly cadence where we're looking at some values. We're always um, surveying uh, 11 subjects and they're providing these particular uh, value scores. And we can always put this into our data analysis function and just reference it here with our conditional formatting. And it's always going to bring back or highlight the values that are above our, our threshold. So we can see here we have overall and hardware above our threshold. And maybe you want to look at that for that particular week. So that's just kind of an extra analysis function that you can do, do using conditional formatting for us to kind of visualize how the correlation is impacted. So we have our two examples of how we can use correlation in Excel. One using the Corel function to do that where we have two variables and the other one using the correlation feature in the data analysis tool pack. So I hope that helps. Thanks for watching.